We meet Sun's mother, who's pretty much like you'd expect as she pressures Sun into getting married. Meanwhile, Jin is only worried about a job interview, despite his roommate telling him his true love will have something to do with orange. And apparently the Korean word for orange is orange, the things you'll learn watching TV. Jin is hired as a hotel doorman by a classist jackass whose son gets set up with son by what's basically a classier version of a pimp. He seems nice, but it turns out he just wants to string her along to keep the pressure off until he marries an American in six months. Jin lets a village man into the hotel so his son can use the bathroom, which by the law of dramatic convenience is exactly when his boss happens to be watching, and is such a jerk about it that Jin quits on the spot. Later he's distracted by a woman in an orange dress which gets him to bump into Sun, a pretty neat twist on the orange thing. And that's how you do a flashback that adds to the story. Sure took you guys long enough. Sun's bummed out about what might have happened to the raft, and it doesn't help when she finds that her wedding ring is gone. At the Arrow, Anna Lucia announces that everyone's going to try to walk across the island to the other survivors. And I'm sure they'll all do very important things once they get there. Everyone splits up to get supplies, and Anna Lucia actually gets angry when Michael asks her to explain why they're all acting so scared. Par for the course for questions on this show, really. Jack finds out about the wedding ring and decides to make it all about him and his own lost wedding ring experience. Are you really that surprised? Michael and Libby talk some more and we still learn nothing about her. For his part, Sawyer is introduced to the scary black guy Taylor, who's named Mr. Echo. And to hell with that very forced piece of quirkiness right now. He's just Echo to me. Before they can get further than that, Libby reports that Michael ran off on her. And somehow, only Jin realizes why, despite Michael bringing up Walt in every other line so far this season. Our heroes! Complete idiots! So Jin and Echo head out after him. Hurley's contribution to the ring search is to insist Vincent ate it, and there's no other explanation. He also asks Sun about the good Korea and bad Korea. Think before you talk! Jin runs into a dead body who Echo says was named Goodwin in an attempt to get us to care more about these new characters we know nothing about. This gets even worse when Jin and Echo have a conversation that's all about what we already know about Jin instead of letting us get to know this new character. This is getting really annoying now. It's Locke's turn for the great wedding ring hunt. Oh, I can't wait. Not only does he make the situation all about him, just like Jack, but he also tells Sun that to find something that's lost, you need to stop looking, which is such a moronic line that I'm surprised she doesn't laugh in his face. Echo finds a footprint and says it has to be Michael because the others don't leave footprints. One more little piece of embarrassment for when they just turn out to be regular people. Then some others arrive, and they have to hide, and we see that one of them is dragging a teddy bear. And with the attention this is given, I'm sure it'll be very important later. Sun is finally driven to spill the beans about the bottle by spending a few minutes with Kate. It's not quite Tuvok testing how he can be driven to murder by spending a few minutes with Neelix, but it's still funny. Sawyer's shoulder is slowing him down, to which Anna Lucia's reaction is somehow to start flirting with him. Yes, unfortunately, the producers apparently decided the big love triangle from season one works so well, they should make it a square. I guess we can call Anna Lucia the Renesme of the group, for lack of a better option. Michael appears to Jin the second Echo wanders off to try to pick up his trail. What a coinkydink! And drink. And Echo finds them again just a few seconds later, so what the hell was the point of getting him out of the way? At least what follows is a pretty touching moment where Jin summons up all the English he knows to convince Michael to come back with them. Sun shows Kate the bottle, and she immediately starts digging through everyone's private messages, which Sun even points out. Between this and the shampoo thing, it really is like they're deliberately trying to make her unlikable now, even though this approach will be dropped once we get to her first flashback of the season, making it pointless now. She mopes about Sawyer for a bit, blithely unaware that he's moved on to the spicy Latina, but then they find the wedding ring. In a neat touch, you actually can see it disappear when she was burying the bottle in the previous episode. At least it would have been neat, except it also disappears in the shot before that, then returns, then disappears for good. I'm normally pretty forgiving of these kinds of continuity errors, but you'd think that for something with this kind of plot importance, they pay a little more attention in the editing room.
My score for And Found is 6 out of 10. The whole wedding ring plot is pretty much a bust, only serving to make four characters look like insensitive idiots, one of whom wasn't actually characterized that way already. The stuff with the tailies works better, but not much, as it's still frustrating how we haven't learned anything about any of them. But I said before that Jin and Sun's relationship was the best aspect of the show through its whole run, and the flashbacks here pretty much single-handedly raise this one above average.